Welcome to 5-Minute German Grammar. Thank you for watching. This presentation will introduce accusative personal pronouns. As we have seen in an earlier presentation, a personal pronoun is a word that can substitute for a person or a noun. In this sentence, we have a third-person plural compound noun, Hans and Petra. Since the noun is the direct object of the verb, it is in the accusative case. We can replace this compound noun with a personal pronoun. When doing this, it is important to match the number, case, and, when applicable, gender of the pronoun with those of the noun being replaced. That is to say, in this sentence, the personal pronoun must be third-person plural and also in the accusative case. These are the accusative personal pronouns in English, which are arranged according to n person, number, and, in the case of the third-person singular pronouns, also according to gender. You may wish to review the presentation on personal pronouns in the nominative case before continuing with this one. Like English, accusative personal pronouns in German are organized by number, person, and gender. Mich, first person singular, dich, second person singular, ihn, masculine third person singular, sie, feminine third person singular, es, neuter third person singular, uns, first person plural, euch, second person plural, and sie, third person plural. The formal personal pronouns, both singular and plural, is sie, which has a capitalized first letter. The accusative personal pronouns in German are similar to the nominative pronouns, with the exception of the pronouns you see here in red. These are first and second person singular and plural pronouns, as well as the masculine third person singular pronoun. You'll recall that the masculine definite article, der, is the only one that changes as it moves from nominative to accusative, so it makes sense that masculine personal pronouns follow the same pattern. Let's see how some of these accusative personal pronouns function in a sentence. In the two sentences you see here, siehst du mich? Ja, ich sehe dich. Do you see me? Yes, I see you. Both pronouns are the direct objects of the verb sehen which requires them to be in the accusative case. For contrast, the subjects of each sentence, which are underlined, are in the nominative case. Here the distinction between nominative and accusative forms are very clear. Of the third person forms, the masculine personal pronoun is the only one that changes as it moves from nominative to accusative. In the first sentence, wo ist er? Where is he? The personal pronoun is the subject of the sentence and therefore in the nominative case. In the second sentence, the pronoun is the direct object of the verb sehen, which puts it into the accusative case. This slide is a variation on what you have seen earlier, with plural personal pronouns being used in place of the singular pronouns. Again, as both pronouns are the direct object of the verb sehen, they must be in the accusative case. Finally, an example of a personal pronoun that does not change forms as it moves from nominative to accusative. In this case, the third person plural forms of Z are identical. How can I distinguish between them? In the first sentence, no action is being reported or transferred to a recipient. Since the verb sind reports a state of being or condition, the pronoun must be the subject of the sentence and in the nominative case. In the second sentence, the pronoun is the direct object of the verb sehen, which puts it into the accusative case. The five-minute German grammar series is produced by David Neville, Associate Professor of German. The video scripts and lecture slides are released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share-alike 4.0 international license. Don't be a square. Remix and share.